Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, I just have a caveat for all of our audience now. Um, I don't consider myself as an expert in the art of idea generation and knowledge translation. But what I can share to you is my own journey and the lessons I have learned as we navigate our idea towards knowledge translation. Others may have done this better, better than I did, but I hope I get to provide you a picture of my challenges, my hopes, fears, failures, and successes. It all started with an idea when I finished my microbiology degree at the, uh, at, uh, I thought uh, I was gonna be uh, generating research work in the microbial uh, origins. You know? And when I, uh, when I saw the movie Outbreak by Dustin Hoffman, I feel like it's going to be like a world of jumping off helicopters, creating vaccines in 24 hours and saving the day. But little did I know that it would take a lot longer than that in terms of generating uh, your capacity to actually develop something in the future. And that took a lot of work and a lot of patience and perseverance. So an idea is very important, primarily because it gives you hope where to go and what to aspire for. But if you will not act on it, it will just remain an idea. So in my mind and in my heart, it felt like I have this, I have this longing to really reach out and try to see if this idea is worth pursuing or, or not. There's something about being bold for your country and for your scientific work. Something about the willingness to, to take some risks despite of all the possible challenges that you will actually encounter, especially developing science and technology programs in our country setting. The need for resources, the need for enabling environment is something that is of a, choice of, of a challenge for everybody and much more also the, the, the amount of people is skilled in the art are very limited in the country because most of them are outside. The thing that is important to me when I was developing the technology programs for diagnostics here in the Philippines is you start your research work by identifying what the need is. It is a humbling experience because as a scientist, you have your own preferences. You have your own subject matter that you really want to work on. But you are working in a country that have very limited resources with emerging needs of, of national concern. Sometimes you have to swallow your pride and choose a path that is most needed by your country rather than the path that is the ones that excites you the most. So in this particular endeavor, the path I chose was to develop diagnostic technologies because here in the Philippines, the access to high, high pollutant technologies like molecular based testing is not accessible to more than 99% of Filipinos. So ideas are generated out of need and not the other way around, uh, especially if your problem is resources. So let me take you a question. What makes a $10 test in the US a $110 test in the Philippines? It's because of the long value chain from tech developer to company distribution to regional distribution to local distributor to technology adaptation and then the patient. Each of these will add cost to the technology, causing a declining in, decline in the access. So what if we bypass this particular toll gates no, in technology development by putting together technology applications and adaptations through local innovation? Feels like a bright idea, but the challenges were actually much more complicated than I originally thought. The cost-limiting nature of molecular tools for diagnosing infectious diseases in the Philippines led to the creation of the Molecular Diagnostic Program in Biotech Manila, 
but I was still then the director of the institute. And based on that, the problem was, how can we reach our ideas uh, to their intended target? There is no company willing to take a chance. There are no expertise in diagnostic kit manufacturing in the country. There is limited knowledge in technology commercialization from bench to bedside. There is limitation in the number of scientists skilled in the art. So we took the most difficult journey uh, as a university scientist by creating the first spin-off biotech company on health diagnostics in the Philippines. So we have to recalibrate our approaches and understand the mechanism from technology development within the university and my uncharted ocean of the business side of developing diagnostic technology. Lessons learned from all over the place as our team navigates in these uncharted regions, recalibrating our approaches as each of the challenges faces us the most. It took a pandemic to appreciate how important the role of biotechnology. After years of knocking at everyone's door, they came knocking at ours. And I remember sending this message to my chief science officer to, in Jan, last January 21, 2020, more than a year ago, about the upcoming coronavirus disease that requires technology development once a genetic sequence were made publicly available. After a lot of challenges along the way, we were placed on the global stage. There were challenges one after the other as we navigate ourselves creating the first local biotechnology industry for health diagnostics in the country. Resources are scarce, supply chain was so difficult. We were competing with the rest of the world lockdown restrictions, of course, a lot of red tapes and even security issues of, on top of developing such diagnostics platform. But through it all, with our clear vision in mind, to be able to provide accessible technology uh, developed by Filipino scientists for our country, we stood our ground and just kept on moving forward, even at a snail speed. Hence the birth, of the locally developed technology uh, for coronavirus kit, which we released uh, last June of 2020, and has now generated uh, support in most of these local government units and private laboratories, supporting the national effort in improving access and reach for diagnostic testings for the coronavirus in the Philippines. To be the first bio, bio, biotechnology company in the Philippines, was never an easy task. The last five years were filled with ups and downs, but we took every lesson we had to heart. But we drew our strength and perseverance from each other and from our innermost desire to be able to serve our country and take pride in the ingenuity of the Filipino scientists. While the normal course of biotech growth in developed countries takes years to reach significant milestones, that did not discourage us to give it a shot despite on the lack of enabling environment here in the Philippines. So there are several lessons that I have learned as a leader of a science team. The leader, in order for the team to keep moving forward despite of all of these challenges, must have the ability to inspire its team. Nothing beats a well-inspired team. The ability to set the direction or to steer the direction of the entire team is very important as you navigate yourselves in this very, very challenging biotechnology landscape uh, in the country. It's also important that you can't do everything all by yourself. You need to empower your team to be able to generate technologies at this scale. You also have to be humble enough to know that your idea may not be the right one. It's very important to listen to your team and always remind yourself why you are doing this in the first place. And lastly, to have faith. To have faith that if you give it your all, you might, you might just be able to get there. So let's have the biggest dream for our country. We start somewhere 
and persevere. Thank you so much.